And now, our feature presentation. Hey everybody, it's Mac here. Welcome back to the Let's Code series. Today, I'm doing the thing that I said I wasn't gonna do anymore. We're talking about text editors again, but, but, hang on, I've got a pretty good reason for it. You may or may not recall that I made a video about Emacs. Now we are ready to test. So, go ahead and open up this file here, and everything is working except for something's not working. What is it? And I had looked at Emacs just because it was installed by default on um, OS X. I think I might have even mentioned Vim in that video. I definitely did at some point when we were going through all the text editors. So, I, I certainly didn't mean to like short shrift it, uh, but I did. Uh, so, I thought we could come back and take a look at it because I've actually kind of changed my thinking about Emacs and Vim a little bit, and we'll get into that later. Um, first of all, if you do want to install the app, it's really, really easy. As long as you have Homebrew installed, all you need to do right here on the homepage of the website, they've got a little bit of code here. You paste that into the terminal and it will install Homebrew for you. You can just do like brew, install, and then bam. And it'll take you know, a little bit to get everything going. And much like Emacs, there is actually, there are actually like container apps that you can get a hold of. They're very easy to install and they're pretty light, kind of small apps. Uh, this one that I have actually works with dark mode and everything, it's, it's a pretty good app. Um, there we go, maybe it will. Well, it was working with dark mode earlier. Maybe if I like restart, there it is. Okay, kind of the same thing I said about Emacs. Uh, it's basically, exactly the same applications, just one's in a terminal window and one's in a separate container. Uh, but we also get options to like, let's see, uh, open a file without having to use the tools inside of them to do so. So that's cool. But of course, if you have it installed, uh, it's pretty easy. You can just type in them into any terminal window and you're in. Of course, one of the other big benefits of using this inside of a term win terminal window, which I didn't mention in the Emacs video, is that you get fairly robust customization as far as fonts, uh, theming, styling, whatever. So let's make a theme real quick for a video. So I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, I think you do QA to exit. Yeah, there we go. Oh, someone is calling me. Did you get the picture I sent you? Anyways, uh, in the terminal app, we do have fairly robust customization, come up to terminal, go to preferences, and we get this nice little window um, that's gonna break out. You've got a whole bunch of themes by default, and if you just double click on one, it'll open up a new window with those themes. This is actually a custom theme that I've created. It's just kind of a nice kind of glossy theme, and it works well with most wallpapers, there's a few that are kind of eh. Uh, but if we want to, let's say, make a new theme, and I'm just gonna, Let's see, we'll make, we'll make it white because I feel like the color will work better. So, oh, it's already white, sweet. Um, and then the only other thing that I wanna do is I'm going to make it bigger for the video, like the font bigger. So let's do like, is 18 too big? Might be, I don't know, we'll do, and then there's a font that I like, do, 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 Minlo. Okay, and if we go ahead and fire up this window, now we have a totally different looking terminal window and it was super easy to do. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into it here and start building an app. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna open up them. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna do, the controls are fairly kind of simple. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's like Emacs, but one cool thing that you can do if you're interested, hit the semicolon and then you can kind of start doing any commands. So semicolon Q is gonna quit out of the app. As I said earlier, uh, semicolon help is a very cool little bit. This is gonna give you a lot of information about how to actually navigate the app itself. So I really, really recommend you check that out. Q to get out again. Q will also just go back a screen. Then what I wanna do is there's another thing you can check out. If we do semicolon uh, vim tutor, this is a cool thing. Whoops, Oops. not an editor command, vim, huh. Well, I got it working earlier. Oh, you know what? It might have been in this container app that I did that. Vim tutor. No, not an editor command. 
There it is. Okay, I see. It's a totally separate app. The same way you open Vim, you would just type in Vim Tutor. I remember there was a way that I got to it. I just totally forgot how to do it. And anyways, this is a cool app. I've gone through this and kind of done everything that it tells you to, even though I'm not following the rules very well here. Anyways, what I'm mostly trying to say about Vim and Emacs by extension, because I haven't used either enough to really have a preference between the two, is that I guess at least for me, and I feel like this is true for a lot of people, I've always had kind of an Apple sensibility about software. I, I just mean that I've always felt that apps should just, you should be able to open them up, immediately tell how to do what you need to do. And if there's any real knowledge required to operate the app, it shouldn't be specific to that app itself. It should be just like, if I'm using After Effects, I shouldn't have to spend forever learning After Effects. I should just have to spend some time thinking about motion graphics and design as a whole. And then whenever I do finally start using after effects or nuke or motion or whatever you're going to use to do visual effects and motion graphics and that type of thing i shouldn't really be held back by also having to learn the software and i certainly don't think that everyone has that kind of sensibility about software but that's always how i felt about software and in general i do think that that is true especially a consumer driven piece of software should really just function with basically no tutorial no introduction someone should be able to open it up and immediately tell how things go and if they want to really dive into that app and learn how to do more advanced things, that's great. But I've also spent some time trying to lean more into actually learning pieces of software recently. I've been like setting up a whole bunch of macros in Premiere, for example. That's something I've been doing. Like, that's a very kind of niche, weird, odd thing to do. And it kind of totally defies that idea of simplicity in software. So I jumped back into Emacs and Vim and started just basically thinking of them as something that you have to learn rather than just a piece of software that should work. I've actually really been enjoying it more, but I guess we'll do the thing for the video. Let's um, create some new files here. So uh, I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna hit escape to make sure I'm not in insert mode. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna type in V split, which is gonna vertically split our two columns here. And then what I'll do now is I'm going to come over to this one here, hit I, and uh, that's gonna put me in insert mode where I can start to type out a document. So we'll do doc type HTML, HTML uh, and slash HTML. And then right here, I'm gonna hit escape to get out of edit mode and semicolon write h whoops, write HTML dot HTML. File exist, okay, fine. So then we'll do exclamation point, write HTML dot HTML. Enter. That should overwrite it. And then if I come over here to the second option, I'm just going to do dash O and CSS.CSS. And that will create a new file for us called CSS. And we can create a class for the body. Um, and we'll just bust this out and see what we can do really quickly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do uh, come up here and we'll do language equals English. So then we'll do head and close out of the head. And anytime that you wanna save, as far as I know, you just hit escape to get out of insert mode and then just do write, write. We'll call this body.html. So let's go ahead and start making a file here. Um, anytime you wanna type, again, just make sure you hit I. Now you're in insert mode and we can get going. So I'm gonna do a title. We'll call this, um, let's see, Vim website. We're gonna get a lot of the same features that you get with um, Emacs, not necessarily like autocomplete, but uh, we will get color coding and automatic indentation. So css.css and let's see, we'll do relationship is gonna be equal to style sheet. And we can probably go ahead and jump down to the body now. Close out of the body tag. And then we'll do H1. Go ahead and set up a new class for that. Uh, let's see, we'll call it, I guess it's H1. It's been a while since I've done these video. I haven't actually grabbed a book to uh, write from. Let's see what's on the shelf here. Okay, I got something. Okay, I think I found a book. So, give it a title, 20,000 Leagues Under the sea, another classic. And I really hope that I actually, we actually haven't done that book before. Now that I think about it. Anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and open up the paragraph tag. Uh, we'll do class uh, equals P 
just give it that name and close out of that. So 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, if you don't know, is like just like a really good sci-fi classic type of situation. It's it's um, Jules Verne. If you haven't read the book, you've definitely heard of Jules Verne, I feel like. So who's the name of the guy that used to play Ernest? I don't know. He had like a pet fish or something that he called Verne. The year 1866 was signalized by a remarkable incident a mysterious and inexplicable phen phenomenon which doubtless no one has yet forgotten not to mention rumors which agitated deeply interested in the matter one of my like weird hobbies that i spend a fair amount of time doing is book binding books like i sew them by hand and this book here Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea was one of the first books that i ever did i feel like a lot of people that do book binding or whatever just like make journals but i print out books like typeset books and then print them out and sew them together and try to make like a good looking handmade book and if i ever do make a good looking one i will be sure to put it up on my youtube channel uh so as you can see uh we do get the text wrapping which is cool i don't know if everyone is into that feature the more that i think about it i feel like for a lot of computer like software development people that's not as big of a deal but i don't know i i'm writing mostly html now for me the text wrapping is great so i I don't see why any text editor wouldn't at least have it as an option. Anyways, now we are on to the CSS. Uh, so let's do body. And I don't really know what I want to add to the body. I guess we'll do like background color and we'll just set it to black. We can do like a margin left. 15% or so, margin right. Uh, and I guess we can go ahead and close out of that one. Uh, let's do a new class for each one here. We'll do font family, we'll do times new Roman, and make sure we say that it's serif, close out of that. Then we'll do font size, and we'll do like three or something. Mm, text align to the center, very nice. And then we'll do a margin top 150 pixels, very cool there. Then close out of that, and we'll just need to do one for the paragraph. We'll copy over this font family stuff. Font size. Oh, I guess I don't really need to specify that, but whatever, we'll do like 1.1 1 .1, since I already did a thing. Yeah, I guess that'll probably be it. I think we are probably ready to go ahead and give this a little shot. So let's see here. Oh, for some reason our CSS isn't showing up there. Let's, um, let's come in here, we'll do write, and then we'll do css.css. Oh, cool, yeah, there it is. So go ahead and open this up. So, something has gone horribly wrong. This is a common theme. What have I done? Do we at least have tech? It does not appear so. There's our CSS file. I don't think we, oh, oh my God. I totally forgot to save the changes to the body file. So make sure we're again, not in insert mode and then we'll do write and then uh, body.html. Ah, there it is. Okay, so something still has go gone horribly wrong, but it's it's much easier to fix. We're just gonna do, um, like come over here, go into insert mode and uh, make sure that's still closed. And then I'm just gonna do uh, color and then white. And hopefully that should fix it. Hit escape, write css.css. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, cool, all right. Why do we make a dark mode website and don't even have the actual display in dark mode? That's more like it. Okay, so I, there's nothing really that I feel like anyone would have learned from this video. We're still just kind of doing it the way that I was reviewing other text editors, but I felt like I, I wanted to make a video about Vim specifically because I did feel like I short shrifted it and I didn't want to because I, I really do like this app, I think. Not that I'm particularly great at using it because I'm definitely not. Um, at least once during this video, and I won't tell you when, I had to Google something really quickly to remember exactly what to type to get it to work. But that's fine, that's the point. I think I'm, I'm gonna make an effort to learn Vim and Emacs, and I don't think I'm gonna regret either. Uh, maybe at some point in the future, we'll be able to come back here and, oh, just out of curiosity, I wonder if I can resize the split here. Oh, heck yeah. Very nice. Anyways, um, thank you everyone for sitting through this video. I don't know exactly what I was like trying to do uh, or whatever, but I do appreciate anyone who watched. Um, so thank you. And I will see you in the next, hopefully more well-organized, thought out uh, video on my channel. Um, see you next time.